beautiful sight and simple in its own. I have the Sutro's constellation perched above me, its four red points blinking in the drink of fog and night like some ethereal port of entry. The radio says it's coming up on 4 a.m. And 16th Street suddenly hot-wired with chivying cries of the highly sexed. A barrage of them, eerily canned, one playboy after another sounding off burdened reports through the air. Invisible behind trees and penumbras of street lamps, but voices all the same. Looping down from second and third story windows, each one flared from the augers of narcotic frights to pass leeward and careless to the women below. You motherfuckers are going to jail. And just like that, a task and exception, some shit inside the And then I fall slap down to the few. It's haunted figures, a spitter. Like startled insects, a scratcher, snipping, a febrile emblem of indecisiveness, pushing on buzzers and pouring upward in hisses, every one of them. Dying a little more. Like the kid, a sprawl on the stoop. Sick and keenly marginal, like a late model tantalus in up to his neck. Denied fruit. And so realizing that the stuff's bigger than him. That it's the unrequited love and therefore in everything he sees. Stepping heavily, a humbled sword canting his course in random lines down Mission Street, a grave he don't leave. It's the photographs again, their captured time fingered once too often and now spun to peak, never settling in the same dungeon twice. And never mind what's taking hits in the abstruse deeps of his belly. Baja drifts peevishly in him now. It's memory jabbing in his nerve like a wayward crank inclined to correct strangers. Pity him. He craves the back of his shoulder, does Polly. A female he can treat like a stooge and pitch his tails and bones. Pity him. Have a hell of a load on your hands. A hell of a load. Says, fashions himself. 
up after some kind of Tarantino cowboy, she says. Yeah, well, Molly hates the phone. Ask anybody. Countless weeks later, he says he wasn't quite sure. Something just broke and washed over him as though the body had suddenly addressed its own uncanny. And lately a man who falters on his heels and disassembles all together quite a bit. Molly picks himself up one hand, one knee, one foot at a time. Stripped of the controlled badass who waves away phantom help. Under the hazy line of street lamps burning coal-like and suspended through the boulevard. That's quite a frame when he takes that critical left turn into the bar. Where the solace of the people din is soon lost once the quick glimpse of her strikes.
drop back. Scan the smallest things rushing to a dark clutch of weather above the busy street. You once said that we are smarter in our dreams. You also said that words were important, and they were said, or so they were said anyway. Thrush of traffic and wind. A natty legion of cirrus cloud streams over the inland peaks. A slow, brawny pace. It converges in royal plumes and drives steadily onward, marching across the sky. The way newer skins converge and cover the body. So many words. That maybe there might have been an inkling of truth hiding among them. I just had to feel it out in peels, wading through air, much like a sculptor might sound the occurring depths and store of the rock. Molecules are in a frenzy up there. A rollicking mass of sightless matter in violent contact. When a phone rings just below the touch, a person might cultivate a small simulation of that. Thunder. Watched its fleeting monochromes pass in the reflection of your aviator goggles. Planes and sky that slid like currents into the hollows of your cheeks, gathering miles of the kind of breathing that conquers speech. You stared straight ahead for hours, drugged and sullen. You look like a cute idiot.
tremendous what the wind can and will bring into clarity. Views once frayed and obdurate, now bound by the hidden blessings of change. And you were here again, fretful but playing it safe. You asked about me where once you had told me how I was. I said no once, a start for any number of pressing endings. And funny how that word remembered the way you squeezed yourself shrill, a death grip on the odd solace of a back of a chair. Your mother, my hand. Flits into traffic, touching down in random lanes until it settles after the deluge into a cozy pocket of gutter across the street. There, as a person might refer to another in place. There, until the glimpse of a raincoat starting into the store cuts the show. And the rain comes. As my hand passed across your face, at once fostering and wiping away woe and worry and a deliberate need to fuck, I told you that if a person believes in time, this is what he does. Words were said. Words were important, or so it was dreamed, anyway. Stir in the kitchen, constant with sibilant tides and the clatter of several wares plied at once. There, in the middle of it, the sorcerer Joe oversees his purview, coaxing a sauce to its signature point, until a sudden wisdom has him banking left to prod and divine the yams give. He claps hands and he's switching right again. His hands busily dicing, busily rinsing and wiping. Quick, attentive hands it turns with a bird and a drop. Never lost on the boiling water, the old Indian will soon preside over. Still as quiet pools, a solace to the billowing cast of steam, saying, "Nah, go on, go away. He's got it. Drink," he says. "What you want?" Dove vi? Claps hands and mugs a swoon for the Polaroid. Distracted at last from contemplating the tests, from counting them now. Far removed from his language in his creaking cottage high in the upper Nevis. At his back, the light's gone blue at the hills. And what's oncoming night continues to rise from the valley floor, enduring slopes and small crested villages. In 
until what is not under blue, that deepening scrim of blue, surrenders its final dapple and winks out, breathing away from the windows, dark and completed to complete, a breath that bears reflection, don't ever get old. meditating at 80 opens, lurching like a rocket's first flames, it soon stiffens against the wind, feet swing out, an absurdity so obvious it can't be helped, certainly not this man nor the abrupt memories of any number of stupidities ever committed in a life, those mute and insufferable tyrants that put the in the first place, simply to drive, think things through. You can almost thank him when in no time at all the feet lower, the mashed potato and quickening flops and slashes across the worrying highway. Enough torque there to catapult the body into a panorama of ancient trees and Van Gogh yellows. These otherwise serene hills of Steinbeck country caught by a certain off, off and away worthy bird. Critically, and floored against the shocks under play. The last of the humpbacks vanishing in the rear view as I lift again, fast among the wind strung trees, the air cool about my chest. 
I had the old McClellan slows once, but I stopped dealing in shy measures. Lit up the county courthouse and I aimed to keep firing. Become my own favorite infidel, apprised of a stellar wash, so clear and distinct, I'd swear it was a jangling glory of bells. I'm all reflex. I've distilled toward it, hugging its burnished roar to my bones. And the promise of what's left in my bag speaks better than me when I really open up this piece. And the pride of my garage finds purchase through the night in a rippling sprawl of echoes. Star Trek Road sits awash in clouds of dust. And Via Montserrate hurdles beneath me to join it at the San Luis Rey branch. Up close. Sweat collects with the loamy odor quickening in the draft. And the upper grove's thick hood of murk and quiet descends heavily across my approach. Up close. Close. Sirens begin their peeling whispers. Their reds and blues twirling the continual afterglow from the bluff. The cutbacks now. Headlights enfilade the dense roadside brush. The turns sluice through like arms into perfectly tailored sleeves. I wind ever upward to the big bed of dead leaves, where I will pull them over me, a cowl, and tarry with the tempo of the hours. of erratic flybys and he's still a pacing mess. Bumbling along from jukebox to bar to his isolated post near the side door. Spanking his brow with furious adjustments. Back and forth he goes, no drip here. Leavening his inner pabulum with tinctures of Curly's agitated mewling and Cramden's distressed moods. Never once, not once, taking his eye off the two. The ball games got him in knots, terribly, terribly conflicting knots. Ring ringing the savage drunk out to the systolic knuckling and splay of his hands. Then along comes the young Turk who thought he could bust one up and in. And Bond sends yet another into the drink. Having none of that, 
though he's rather satisfied. He sashays in place. An ashtray and cigarette in one hand, and wishes in the other. Welcome. Behold the nexus of his lonely nights at the mirror. Just before the throes of his stars abandon him. Hit code red again. A downright two and eight. Holding a walking bellow like it was the mighty and distant purge of the swatted ball in the Warner Brothers cartoon. All mouth and jangling tongue. Yawing toward the downtown skyline as designed by Long Carnal Ray. Curtains above him peel inward and fall quickly back in place. And George cuts the engine. Go slouch beneath a nearby stoop of royals and the dojo, rocking to and fro, secretly intent, almost monkish. It's clear he's through with the kid stuff. No tears. No more of the same ageless sorrows, none of it. Any last grief will just have to wait until the bottom of that tall boy he's got hitched in his back pocket appears, you bet. It's clear there will be no more querulous fits for today. It's payback time. George's time. Daily shit starring George. Squat over a cardboard box, his face an opaque drift of frowns under a mess of colorful black hair. Gazing skyward and back, as though suddenly land weary and adoring the ocean's water. The coastal bulkheads lit pink and bellies are coming in fast and with credible heft from the coast. And they hit the cipher in. That shape he takes in sleep once the beer and day have done him in. A frozen and ponderous form of it. Looking as dead as those of shock bomb cities, slung immobile 